I'm David Rydell. Welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to do a still life demo. Um, real simple objects, real simple composition, and we'll just move right along in this so I can show how to set the still life up and keep it moving. Um, I've got a Claussen's canvas, kind of smooth, and I've already got my palette set up and I already have a tone on the canvas. So let's get it started. Okay, so the colors I use, it's a pretty simple palette. I use the Gamblin Titanium Zinc White. It's got a nice stiffness like that. And then over here I've got the Rembrandt Ultramarine Cobalt and the um, Winsor Newton Cerulean. Um, I don't use the Cerulean very much. This other blue is a Thalo I'm going to use for the small pot that I have up there. Over here, also Rembrandt, I've got the orange, cad yellow deep, and cad yellow medium, I think it is. These are also Rembrandts. I like the oiliness of Rembrandt. That way I don't have to use a medium while I'm working. Sometimes I'll use Terra Rosa. Don't have it out now. And then I've got the yellow ochre. That's a Winsor Newton product. Um, I've got raw umber, which is old Holland. And then this is a Viridian, but it's Holbein, which is a unique color. It's, um, it's nice and warm and transparent. It's really easy to use. On this side, I have a dioxanine purple. It's Winsor Newton. And then I have also Winsor Newton, the permanent alizarin. Come back to a cad red medium. And then the um, Rembrandt transparent oxide red. This is another great color. I, I can use that in anything. Um, that's the palette. Thinking in masses here. Okay, I'm going to start with just a mix of the transoxide and some ultramarine, just for a middle brown, so I can find the position of these objects on the canvas. And because this is about simple masses, I can move a bit to the left, a bit to the right, as I need to, because I'm not putting a lot of time into a linear mode of thinking. Okay, so there's a block in of where these objects are going to land on the canvas. And nothing is arbitrary. Everything is done for a reason. I want my shadow coming in here, maybe a bit of shadow over here. And I want this amount of space around the objects. That's the feel. That's the distance from me that they are landing on the canvas. So spend a lot of time with this. If you make the objects too big, everything is very close and kind of inflated. If you make them too small, it just feels very far. I'm going to come in here with um, a little more paint on my brush and start to build the shadows. And everything is going to stay pretty flat right now. It's a world of flat shadows and flat light. I still got this mix of transoxide, ultramarine, and I threw a little yellow in it. So I'm kind of just moving around this pile of paint, some a little darker, some a little lighter. 
And again, I'm keeping these shadows as a unit. find out more accurate colors I move along but first I want to show you that this is just a mass this is just a dark mass here and then I can pull the lemon slice out of that Come in and lay some color on that in just a second here. So the way I'm thinking about this vase is as a flat of color here. It does have a shadow side, but mostly it's just this flat place of color. And what is developing here is that the tabletop, the lemons, are my bright light. With this is just kind of a secondary. This is just holding the place, adding some color. And then I'll get my shadows in here. And that'll increase the focus on that group of light. This is setting the stage for those lemons. That's the focus. That's where it's going to be bright. Just setting up the environment here. I want to get some tabletop on here. And I'm not going to develop this as a fancy tabletop. It's not a fancy tabletop. It's mainly just a value. This is still a mix of the transoxide with some ultramarine and a touch of yellow. But again, what I'm pushing on here is the flat darks and to keep this group of lights bright. This is what the focus is. I'm going to add just a touch more yellow on these shadows. Get the shadow on this face. And then come into the lights.
So the colors I have on my palette, and at this stage I'm using most of, are the ultramarine blue, the transoxide red, and the cadula medium. And I keep the pile kind of spread out, and I'll grab the different variations that I need. Over here I have some raw umber and the um, cadula deep, you know, and then I can push a bit of red into it as I need. Um, and from this base, I'm getting most of the painting so far. Over here, I have some thalo blue with cad yellow. And I'm kind of moving around from the most of the blue until I get to a richer, darker mix. And from here, I'll find most of the vase. The vase is laid in very simply right now. Now I'm going to put the light on these lemons. And as I paint, I'm keeping the light flat and the shadows flat. And as soon as I get my flats on here, I'm feeling bright. And then I'm going to come in, modify the edges, and start to push and pull these shapes. But it's about starting big and flat make a statement about the, um, the size of the light. So I need to build this internal edge, and that'll be with really rich, strong paint. Internal edge between the light and the shadow, right along here. And then I'll put the highlight on. And that will change these flat pieces of paint into the illusion of form.
so the illusion of form begins and I can now start to develop form in that I'll use the idea of more and less to push near and far. I'll put richer, stronger paint towards the front and that'll bring it forward. I'll find a little grayer mix towards the back and that'll help it turn into the background. And this is how I develop my paintings. So this is the initial block in. It's about keeping the shadows big and the lights big. This is how I balance the painting. And it all gets developed from here with edge work, the highlights, and the push and pull of more and less paint. Um, thank you for watching and I will show more how this painting develops on the Facebook page. I'll put some flats in and um, you can watch it there. Thanks again.